Do you like blood? I like it. I like having it, you know, it's pretty good. But you could always use more blood. And that's why today's sponsor is Blood Hunt. Blood Hunt is a free-to-play battle royale game set in Prague, entirely based around the ruthless vampire clans going at each other and, well, you know, get in their blood. It combines a decent spin on the normal BR formula by not only being, well, the vampires, but also having a decent amount of verticality, supernatural powers, and the ability to work around, outsmart both fellow players, Inquisition soldiers, and so on. There's excellent new progression improvements, allowing you to level up your archetypes and get tons of different kinds of abilities. There's a ranked mode if you want to be, you know, top level vampire boy. And there's even a great new blood hunt mode, which actually caters to people like me who aren't as good at games like this. You wanna have it a little more of a casual, fun, mess around kind of game mode. It's a genuine mix up in the whole BR formula, not only with the way they do ranked and the RP and, and different kinds of matchmaking, but also how they do perks and progression, having the ability to level yourself up and use all these crazy powers in a vampire heavy clan world. It, it's got, it's got intrigue. And you can check out Blood Hunt right now in the description. And also because it's free to play and it is out now, you may absolutely try it immediately. No purchase necessary. Thank you very much for sponsoring this video. And Nathan Drake is gonna need some more blood. Hello everybody, my name is Bricky, currently suffering from tinnitus from the grenade launchers in this game. An ambition of mine since starting YouTube, but more recently with me jumping more into video game essays and reviews has been to talk about games I really loved that weren't really prominent or relevant in the modern day and still somehow do well. A combination of some recent success, great Patreon support, and the beautiful people out there buying merch led me to finally take the plunge and do Kane's Wrath. It did very well. Red Alert 3 came after that, and now it's time to go full blown into just talking about shit I feel like. Uncharted is a very popular game starring treasure hunter and thief Nathan Drake, journalist Elena Fisher, and old man who definitely has sex, Victor Sullivan, as they go out and find treasures lost to the world. A widely popular series due to his excellent characters, witty writing, grade A acting, and being just that perfect hybrid between video game and action movie. With four entries, I wanted to discuss them. And Unshar is a series that feels very lighthearted, never took itself too seriously, but most importantly, it doesn't really need a gamer to truly enjoy it. This is absolutely a game you can put in the hands of boyfriend, girlfriend, even parents that have never touched a video game before, and they can probably do pretty well. And even then, if they don't touch the controller and they just sit there at the couch watching it, they can keep up without having to play it because the story is action movie plus game combined. That's what Inchara does. It casts a wide net. Games that nobody will really hate, but tons of people will love. So I finally got my hands on a PS5, purchased the Uncharted Nathan Drake collection, booted it up, and launched Uncharted 1 Remastered to replay this classic for this video. Five hours later, on the same day, I beat Uncharted 1 and realized it's not what I remembered it was. I'm really wet. Let's discuss. The game opens up with a quote from Sir Francis Drake and panning over to his coffin underwater that is then superseded by a shot of it on a boat being opened by our main character, Nathan Drake, voiced by the ever so talented Nolan North. He is accompanied by American journalist Elena Fisher, who he has drug out on this expedition so that she can have a little documentary thing about Sir Francis Drake, who Nathan Drake apparently is a long descendant of. This is already a really solid start to the game. I mean, it's a remaster, but it's 2007. Remaster or not, the voice acting and acting in general is just pretty high quality. And this is in 2007, a year that was killer for video games. The big intrigue is that Sir Francis never was buried in this coffin, faked his own death, something of that nature, and he left behind a book, his journal with all the clues and things that he learned about. Nathan Drake, in typical lovable scumbag Nathan Drake fashion, informs Elena that they don't have the permits to be out there when pirates come attacking, and she takes this, you know, pretty well. What? But then seems to adapt to the situation shockingly fast. Do you know how to use one of these? Uh, yeah, it's like a camera, you just, Point and shoot, right? Good girl. You all right? Nothing the years of therapy won't fix. Now this section is the combat tutorial, both in gunplay, mainly gunplay, and also a little bit of melee combat as you fend off all the pirates attacking your ship. You'll notice throughout my footage, 
I don't shoot very well. Well, that's because the gameplay of this game is ass. Playing it feels incredibly off, even for 2007. Perhaps the aim assist is not strong enough. Perhaps the way the sticks move isn't quite proper, but something about it makes it feel incredibly clunky. The cover mechanics feel outdated and, and super off, and it's just, it doesn't play very well. And that's why if you're watching the footage, you'll be wondering to yourself, it, is the person playing this a dolphin having a stroke? No, it's just me having a stroke. Now, normally this isn't too bad because it's actually a movie plus video game. You don't need groundbreaking combat, but you'll see. After fighting off the pirates, you meet Victor Sullivan, an associate of Nathan's, often goes by Sully, and he always wears terrible old man shirts that can either be considered tacky or classy, depending on who's asking, like the one I'm wearing now. I mean, he's the old man cool guy, right? He's a womanizer, he's got the silver fox, he's always smoking a cigar, you know, it, it's Sully. There's a million types of Sullys in movies and stuff, and he does a great job here. But he's also got some shady business dealings, and he's also, like Nathan, kind of an asshole, which they promptly explain by leaving Elena at the dock. The next segment is Sully and Nate walking around some tombs, and this segment's pretty good. There's some good dialogue between the two of them, nice witty banter, and it also serves as more of a climbing tutorial for the player. No combat here, which is actually very nice. It also instills the wonderful 2000s trope of red barrels. They'll be shooting a lot of red barrels. Their banter is really good. Sully and Nate together are some of the highlights of this game. It's just exploration, climbing, and talking. Enjoy it while it lasts. The first puzzle is here too, which isn't even really a puzzle. It's just push the things in the right order. There's nothing puzzling about it. They, 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 it's a solution. You get this fun little Crash Bandicoot running segment, which is pretty cool. It's one of the few spectacle sections of the game, which is actually quite few in the first Uncharted game. They, they ramp up a lot more on the others. So Nate and Sully find out that their golden statue has been moved somewhere and they end up coming across a, a fucking Nazi U-boat. Look at that thing. Like, look how fucking big it is. How did it get there? Look at the river. Look at the river it's in. How did it get there? Like, Nathan, I don't think... Must have come up the river during flood season and gotten stuck. Is gonna cut it. How the, the fuck <laughs> did that get there? This now has Nate doing some more death-defying climbing. He gives the little Sir Francis Drake book to Sully, and Sully keeps telling him what to do because this is an early game. You should be able to drop right down into the U-boat from there. Thanks, Captain Obvious. You get a little bit of Resident Evil perspective in here with the camera angles. Nate finds a bunch of Spanish gold, which he for some reason doesn't take, and then finds the captain who has been, quote, writ to shreds. But we're on the path towards Sir Francis and his treasure. Though I guess it doesn't matter because at this point, Sully is held at gunpoint by our main villains, Gabriel, Roman, and Navarro, old associates of Sully's who uh, believe he owes them a whole lot of money, and they are there to collect. One might say, They'd kill for it. Nothing to do. The torpedo that he knocked over in the boat explodes. He runs away and he runs into the only thing that's more frightening than armed guards chasing you. An angry Elena Fisher. Ugh. That's for leaving me at the dock. What the hell are you doing here? And I hope you've really enjoyed yourself with all these little exchanges because joy is over. It's now time for pain. You and Elena escape through room after room after room of armed guards, chest high walls, and genuinely janky combat. You take Sully's plane, get shot down over the jungle by anti-aircraft flak cannons for some reason, count to five, and then boom, you're stuck in the jungle. And this is when the game takes a drastic dip in quality. The next near hour of gameplay is nothing but combat nothing but shooting enemies who say the exact same voice lines every time they see you. The game is almost afraid that you get somehow bored, so every single room, every single avenue is more and more combat, and sometimes you don't even get music. You're here to rescue Elena, but Nate's by himself. Nate, at least in the first game, is not very good by himself because he has no one to banter with, no one to have quips with. It's just completely filled with dead air the whole time and endless, crappy gunplay. This is a running theme in this game. Whenever Nathan is alone, it's mostly filled with combat and it's almost always bad. There are some cool parts here, like this awesome shot of him scaling this giant tower as it pans out. That's really cool. I mean, the arenas aren't terrible, despite the all being the jungle and ruin, but 
it is just never ending constant monotony and real quick i want to hop in and say well bricky of course the combat's bad this game was made in 2007 yeah, so were these games. <laughs> but anyway, this scene luckily ends when the most jarring transition ever, where you shoot a guy, a grenade launcher blows up, it fades to black, and you immediately wake up in a jail within like three seconds. It is way too quick of a transition. It's kind of funny. It almost could have been played for laughs. But now you meet Eddie Raja, a far more enjoyable villain than the other two. Someone with real personality and a stellar VA. Not even two minutes of discussion go by and I already love him. Is that it? Is that my deal? Die now or help you and die later. That's oh, a tough call, but you know what? I'll take die now. Die now? Listen to me, maggot. I was promised treasure on this goddamn rock. And now my men are dying. They can't even go outside to take a piss without an armed guard! And I have nothing to show for it! <laughs> Elena breaks him out after this, and you get your second major set piece moment in this game, where you're controlling a grenade launcher machine gun hybrid on the back of a technical, and it's actually pretty fun. Turret sections were all the rage back in the day, but this is one of those good ones because you've just had so much monotonous, terrible combat, but now you've got some excitement, you've got some spectacle, you have another person with you to have banter with, and you know, it's not as hard or boring. It's fun. It's not, you know, profound or anything, but it's anything that isn't this game's combat. Plus you get more Eddie at the end. Damn it, this guy's crazy. Eddie, take it easy, buddy. <laughs> well, you're out of luck now. And out of road. Now. They drop down, and after a short swimming section, you would think there'd be some reprieve from the action, but no, you're insane. You get more gameplay combat. Oh, for God's sake. Fight some more goons. Then you get your cutscene. This was a big mistake. <laughs> Some really good dialogue here and a nice twist of intentions. Nathan wants to leave the island because they're massively outnumbered and it's very dangerous, but Elena is actually the one giving him shit. She's the one who wants to stick around. It adds to their character's banter a bit, and it has some just surprisingly good facial animations for this style. Like, I know remaster, but they didn't remaster everything. Like the way their faces move and their dialogue, it's... It's top level stuff and enjoy it too, because it's time for pain again. The jet ski segment lives rent free in my head whenever I think about Uncharted 1. It is by far the worst part of the entire game. It is by far the worst segments in this whole thing. It sucks. It's so bad. Oh my God. For starters, it handles like your drunk father coming home, but having the firepower of his belt. Break, neck, grenade launcher with infinite ammo. The controls for this thing are abysmal. It doesn't go forward with the sticks. It goes forward with right bumper or X. And then in order to aim, you have to hold left trigger and fire right trigger at the same time. So moving and shooting is really bad. Moving in general, is bad. Just driving this jet ski is absolutely terrible. I constantly have to stop in order to fire properly because any kind of moving and shooting doesn't work. And also, 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 you might notice that I am firing at every single goddamn barrel I see. You want to know why? Because at any difficulty, and I mean any difficulty over normal, if you touch one of those barrels, touch it, tap it, graze the tip of your cock upon said barrel, it explodes and insta-kills you. I knew that was the case, so I shot every goddamn red barrel I could find. However, I did run into one of them and I find out that on normal, you won't die from it. You'll just get this close to death. One tap from an enemy will send you down. I played this game on normal because I refuse to play it on any hard difficulty. The other games are really good at hard difficulties. Absolutely more fun. This one, no. So why you don't play Mass Effect 1 on Insanity? You play it on normal, and then you play 2 on Insanity. You then get off the jet ski, do some more shooting combat, and then you get back on the jet ski! And then you get off the jet ski, and you do more shooting. And then, then, finally, by the grace of the Lord, we get an actual nice cutscene. It's a problem 
when I look forward to the unplayable cutscene movies in a video game instead of the game's gameplay. Elena and Nate find some clues. They flirt a little bit, which is cute, but then they actually explain what's the ring. See, it belonged to Sir Francis Drake, which as we know is Nathan Drake's long dead ancestor, but is specifically dated a day after his death. Adds a little bit more intrigue to the overarching story. <clears throat> more shooting, more combat. Yay, cutscene! Elena uses her camera and finds out that the villains actually have Sully captured. Uh, or, you know, something of that nature. And, and rightfully, she's a little bit untrustful, you know? It's like, oh, why the hell? I thought he got shot. What's going on here? But at the same time, it's, you know, Nathan knows Sully, but it's a little bit of attention. You cross a rickety bridge and Elena has to ditch the camera in order to grab Nate's hand. Though, I mean, she could have just, like, Maybe a little bit forward. It, it, it's whatever. It never mind. Which I think was meant to be a bigger deal than it was. Like this was kind of Elena's whole thing. It just kind of happens, and it's and it's over. I guess it doesn't really matter much though, because after that you go back on the fucking jet ski. Except this time you don't get a grenade launcher. You get a pistol. A pistol. You see, Ivan. You 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 use pistol as Elena Fisher because grenade launcher too strong. <sighs> Combat resumes after that. But it's a bit more varied now. Enemies have laser sights that you have to constantly dodge roll or get behind cover to avoid. And it allows you to, if you keep on doing your dodges and then go for a shot, that works. But if you stand still for too long or you aim for too long, it'll hit you. And it's a one shot kill if you get hit by this too. Also, the weapons they use for this stuff is pretty good. The Dragonov Sniper and Desert Eagle. That's one thing I will give it is that even more than halfway through the game, they're still adding new enemy types. And that keeps it fresh, despite the combat being terrible. It's a bit aggravating though after the combat because this area is really big and Nathan won't run past a slight jog. So you're just very slowly kind of jogging your way through this entire area with Elena and they aren't talking to each other. This is the time for them to be talking to each other and making that good dialogue, but nope, you're just trotting away, trotting away. It's almost like she's not even there. And I don't know why. This is the part where there should be a little bit more to it, but Nah. Finally, you run into Sully and you rescue him. And, you know, naturally, there's two of them are pretty distrusting of the guy. And they want to make sure that, you know, he's all up to snuff. And, and there's a little bit of dialogue back and forth. Some pretty good stuff. And Sully's a little angry. Nate's a little angry. But it's all proven fine when Sully pulls out the book from Sir Francis Drake. And there is a wonderful bullet hole in it. it means the villains did try to shoot him. And all's well that ends well. He sent them on a wild goose chase somewhere, trying to keep himself alive, buy some time. The and there he is. You have another puzzle. Not really a puzzle. Move the statues in the right direction. Easy. And then Nathan immediately leaves. He's alone again. God damn it, Uncharted 1. Nate eventually is able to eavesdrops on our villain's conversation. Eddie Raja is once again fantastic as usual. I believe that one man could wipe out your entire crew. Oh, it's not just Drake, god damn it! I'm telling you, this island is cursed! Enough. Take your sorry mob and go. And I eat camel! <laughs> More combat, more climbing, and the funniest, funniest, tiniest fall damage death I've ever seen. You barely fall, and he just, just ragdolls out and is gone. Another bad puzzle, just align the symbols in the journal. Nate regroups with Sully and Elena. Another kind of bad puzzle where they just turn the thing. Then Sully gets separated from a trap, and then you actually get just Nate and Elena stuff. And this is actually a really enjoyable section. The puzzle here is simple. There are three Roman numerals in the book, two, five, and seven. And there are a ton of Roman numerals all over this really sprawling gauntlet. There are also a ton of different paths that lead to various areas. But if you want to find the right way out, you only follow two, five, and seven. This level is really awesome, actually. It's got a ton of dynamic stuff going on. It's visually impressive for the time, quite sprawling, very big. It also has a wonderful amount of dialogue between Nate and Elena there's some climbing there's some combat there's that all that little puzzle solving it's puzzle solving but you know it's something this is one of the better parts of the game it's pretty easy sure but it's it's a fun area it's visually impressive it feels very treasure hunty and it's extremely funny when nathan gets hit by a brazier complete this area all the combat and then you are awarded with a corpse sir francis drake himself he was never able to find the treasure he got here and then he just he just died here. It's an interesting subversion of expectations. The trail goes cold with Sir Francis Drake, but then of course it gets rejuvenated because you got Eddie and some new friends. We're all dead. Oh crap. Dick, he 
we don't make it out of here, I just want you to know, I hate your guts. This part is probably the highlight when I think about Uncharted 1. And whenever I go back and play this game, it's always the part I'm most looking forward to. For a lot of people, this is just a standout section, both in terms of narrative and in terms of gameplay. When I first played this, I had no clue there'd be anything supernatural in this game. I genuinely thought this was a pretty grounded game and it was the entire time up, but now replaying it, they're basically screaming at you that something's gonna happen. Yeah, it looks like he was killed. Ripped to shreds, actually. And now, my men are dying. They can't even go outside to take a piss without an armed guard. I don't get it. How does a whole colony just drop out of history? My men are getting massacred. <laughs> I'm telling you, this island is cursed! Enough. And this is an introduction to the zombies on Tren. These little Tren zombies are actually an interesting subversion of gameplay because the area they put you in is completely devoid of any cover. And you probably are gonna feel, you know, a little exposed from that because you've been doing chest high walls for the past four hours or so. They are also absolutely lethal. Two hits will kill you and you can't do melee combat against them whatsoever. But of course, with no ranged combat, you're free to move around however you like. So instead of taking cover, all the time you're running and gunning constantly and eddie being there is a great setup as well eddie doesn't really do much damage but when he fires at the enemies they do get stunned a little bit and i think that's the game trying to let you realize hey these are new enemies i'll give you a little bit of a helping hand so you can get used to their new mechanics unfortunately the helping hand does not last very long Rest in peace. So now you're on your own. You've gotten a little bit of help dealing with the trend zombies and it's all up to you. you. Have to fight them a decent bit, run away with Elena doing the run and gun. And it's, it's genuinely intense. It's a total subversion of expectations in the good kind of way. It's a brand new enemy with a brand new gameplay formula. And it is probably the best part of the game. The whole next segment adds to that. You're in a Nazi base, the power is out, and you're having to deal with hordes of these enemies in super close quarters in a brand new kind of gameplay formula it's great they're coming out of the walls the ceilings it feels genuinely frightening you even get the chance to pick up some german engineering this all cultivates after you get the power on to a fun reveal sir francis drake did find the treasure. The treasure is the giant golden statue, the El Dorado. And the El Dorado is in fact cursed. Anyone that opens that thing will turn into these horrifying zombies. So Sir Francis Drake decided to make it his last life goal to try and safeguard this from anyone else. He died attempting to protect the world from this terrifying artifact. And the trend zombies you've been fighting, these are actually the Spaniards that were his crew all the way back in the 1500s. And then of course the Nazis wanted to use it for their own gain, classic Nazi plot line, evil engineering stuff, blah, blah, blah. So Elena gets captured by a villain. You meet up with Sully and you fight through the final gauntlet of regular gun enemies. A, a pretty tough gauntlet too. I died a few times here on normal. I, I feel like that this on crushing would be genuinely really tough you finally make your way to our villains and i keep saying our villains for a reason because they're so fucking forgettable i wanted to set it all up for this part of the video do you even remember their names you remember adi raja because adi raja is a goddamn chad but do you even remember their names i told you probably less than 30 minutes ago the names of both of our villains do you remember because i didn't i remember the names of every uncharted villain in two three and four lazarevich uh Oh shit, I forgot. Oh god, what's the chick's name? Marlene in, in three? I know there's Talbot. And then four is Rafe and Nadine. I remember that. Uncharted three villain. Marlo! Not Marley. Marlo! I was close, fuck you. But I always forgot the names of the Uncharted 1 villains because they're so forgettable and they're so terrible. Boring, generic, etc. Do you remember their names? Gabriel, Roman, and Navarro. <laughs> They have the El Dorado, they have Elena, and then Navarro tricks Gabriel Roman into opening it, it up and turning him into a trend zombie from the curse, who he then puts down immediately. And that's the concept. That's the point is that the treasure means nothing. The curse, that's the real moneymaker. That's the real thing right there. That's the weapon. That's the power. After they airlift the El Dorado, you take the shotguns, you start just running and gunning, shooting through. You jump on the damn thing. Elena kicks a guy out, shoots the pilot. You crash land and you're on the big boat. And now starts 
one of the worst boss okay it's not one of the worst boss fights a pretty goddamn terrible boss fight you know it is one of the worst ones it is one of the worst ones i can think of it's a whole bunch of chest high boxes and navarro has a laser sighted shotgun and what he does is he blind fires twice and then he aims and he shoots. If you are out of cover when he does the aim, you instantly die. If you try to bum rush him, you instantly die. If you try to flank him, you instantly die. He will immediately auto track to you and then try to kill you. What you have to do is kill every single one of his guards and then he will move and then you do it again three times it's genuinely terrible and then at the end when you're up on the helipad area there's all the boxes there you have no gun and you just sit there behind the box and he shoots your box twice then he puts down his gun and that's when you need to move and the moment you step out of cover he'll blow your box up and then rinse and repeat to the next box and the next box if you try to run at him sucks you immediately die you have to wait till your cover is destroyed 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 and then you run up and punch him it's it's fucking awful it is fucking awful. You do some quick time event stuff. You punch him a little bit. You go and help Elena. And then he stands in a very precarious spot. In which case, Nathan Drake decides to go full Chris Redfield. Punch a fucking helicopter off a goddamn boat. Which wraps around his leg and drags him into the ocean with the El Dorado. So he arrives on a boat. He stole a bunch of treasure. Which is great. And the three of you leave. Nathan makes a quip. Roll credits. And I, and I mean that in that like speed. Roll credits. It ends really abruptly right after everything just happens no real epilogue no real conclusion it just ends on their way out roll credits that, that's uncharted one i can't believe this game got a sequel y you might think that i'm i'm a little harping on this maybe a little bit too much and if you only care about the you know the characters and the story well the story isn't that great but the characters and the voice acting sure because it is entirely held up by its characters and voice acting it's so well done the quips and the, the talking and granted there are a couple problems i have with it sometimes it feels like the characters talking to a live studio audience like they're talking to themselves just because the player will hear it doesn't feel very natural that happens especially in the beginning when elena gets like left for the dock hey should have seen that one coming or one time when nathan hits his head on something ah i did not see that it just doesn't feel very like genuine but I can't believe this game got a sequel. I finished in about four and a half hours. Four and a half hours. The whole game. Uncharted 1. And granted, I was going a bit fast, but if I took my time, it'd probably be five hours. There's not much to do or see. It's one location the whole time with combat that is not very good. The villains are horribly forgettable. The combat sucks. The jet ski spots are awful. The location variety is not very good because it's one goddamn location. It is too short. It ends abruptly. It has so many problems i am flabbergasted that this game got a sequel whatsoever it's not the worst game in the world of course it's not but once we talk about uncharted 2 i'm really glad it did uncharted 1 is a necessary evil because 2 3 and 4 are light years better than 1 and 4 is an even step above two and three. You play Uncharted 1 because you bought the Uncharted Nathan Drake collection. You do it in one day. You just binge through the whole thing to get you your setup. And then you move on to the much stronger entries. Uncharted 1. It's not great, but necessary evil, as I said. Thank you, everyone, for watching this video. Thank you to my supporters on Patreon. Uncharted 2 is our next one up be exciting to hop back into that one i'm really excited to play it again i haven't started it yet and you know i'm just woo, i like uncharted 2 a lot questions how are our questions for your videos shoddy they're terrible they're 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 terrible you you had terrible keep it up do you prefer candy or like pastries when it comes to sweets can you prefer like a chocolate bar job breakers etc pastries prefer pies cakes donuts etc um, I prefer pastries. Uh, as far as candy goes, I prefer like a chocolate bar kind of thing instead. I'm not a big fan of like Mike and Ike or something like that. Give me like a crunch bar. Mm. Pastries, pies are incredible. I like pies way more than cakes. I think cakes are way too sweet. I like donuts too, but in a very small amount. Like give me a couple Krispy Kreme ones. Don't overload me. Don't give me any jelly filled. I'm a very simple guy. Thank you everyone for watching. I'll see you next episode. Uncharted 2. Let's go. Come on. Obviously you're a skater. <laughs>